So this is my review for Return of the Living Dead, which originally came out in 1985. I originally watched this movie almost 10 years ago, actually, in 2015. Back then, I was on an 80s horror movie kick, and I had never heard of it before. So honestly, I just assumed it was going to be stupid. I was horribly wrong, and I'm glad. The movie stuck out in my mind with the Trioxin theme and Tar Man. Tar Man still scares me to this day, and I mean that in a good way. Unintentionally, I hadn't watched this movie for years. I finally sat back down to rewatch it again this year, in 2023. I actually was able to watch this for free, of course with ads, on Pluto.com. Pretty surprised, or actually it's Pluto.tv. I was surprised though that they had it. Anyway, being a little older, I watched the movie again with new eyes, and it was a little like a new movie to me. I was able to look at all the small details, listen to the little nuances, and really appreciate the dialogue in the movie. Rewatching, you could see all the detail to the settings, like the anatomy, posters, the animal specimens, the old gravestones, and more. There were zombies dressed in clothing, respective to their time periods, like one of the female zombies dressed in the late 1940s or early 50s attire. I watched this, of course, like I said, on Pluto TV, and it was actually really good quality. There were ads, which is, to me, a fine trade-off. Personally, I don't really mind. <coughs> you know, because anywhere else, of course, you'd have to pay. And I would pay, because I do think this movie is worth it. There is an overall grittiness and sort of dirty look to the movie. I liked how, <laughs> how the scary punk stereotype was just over the top, but actually good in the movie. The hokey names like Trash and Suicide, which doesn't get much edgier than that. Though, I'm sure that it really freaked out people back then who hadn't ever came across punk culture before. Or were much more traditional in life. I'm aware that punks in movies always seem to be more exaggerated than in real life, but the trope actually works quite fine with the movie. It was sort of said, without saying it, that the movie deals with this punk group, outcasts from society, who are put into the zombie scenario. The unsaid plot or idea of Tina, the sweet original or sweet normal girl, who was dating one of the punks, Freddy, was probably a surprising point for many people when they first watched the movie. I actually liked the idea because many people to this day still think that punks and metalheads are these evil, scary people. In fact, I read a book by a famous psychiatrist that truly believed that goth subculture and listening to bands like Cannibal Corpse were precursors to becoming a serial killer. Ironic, considering how people like Tex Watson, John Wayne Gacy, and Ted Bundy murdered people before the onflux of goth culture or the creation of death metal in general. The character Suicide, who had a small yet memorable role, was so interesting to me because he looked scary, the name was scary, and yet he was actually an intellectual in some ways even coming off as a poten as potentially one of the smartest characters. The few scenes he was in showed him being annoyed that his friends always relied on him for a ride. He later was found contemplating life, saying that he wasn't that what he wore wasn't a costume, but was a way of life. <laughs> I know it probably seemed or was supposed to be in a silly way, but his character always stood out to me because he was different from the rest. It was actually kind of cool how he pushed Trash away from him when she was butt naked and dancing on him. He said, what's the matter with you? Or something on the lines of that, which is kind of surprising because characters like that are typically portrayed as promiscuous. 
It's sad that Mark Venturini, suicide's actor, passed away about ten years after that from leukemia. He was so incredibly young. Return has really funny dialogue, especially when a character ends up having to eat their words or make an observation about real life. The trioxin barrels being sent to Unita Medical Supply were described as typical army fuck-up, which, if you've ever worked for the government, is so true. There are so many times when a character says something, and then the worst nightmare, or most precious dream, comes true. The best example was how Trash was aroused by the idea of being eaten alive by old men. And that ended up being her fate. It didn't make sense, though, how she was devoured, then came back completely intact as a zombie. She was dead, but naked, and not a single bite mark. Gratuitous fan service, for sure. <laughs> The movie is supposed to take place in Louisville, Kentucky, but it doesn't seem to convey this at all until the end of the movie, when the army is sending out the big bomb. I'm not sure what the point of even using Kentucky as a setting was, as the movie was so <laughs> totally and obviously in California. On top of that, there was one police officer who spoke with a bad country twang, which wouldn't even make sense if it was more believably set in Kentucky. I can only assume that maybe the state was chosen due to its proximity to Pennsylvania, where the trioxin barrels were supposed to have came from. Speaking of which, I really liked the origin story of how George Romero's Night of the Living Dead was true, but they had to change the story a little bit because the government. <laughs> it's funny to me, but a great concept, especially considering how many real-life conspiracies there are about what the government has done. James Karen was the best actor in the movie from how he started out like a mean and tough boss in the beginning, and how the whole scenario turned him into a crybaby. As the movie went on, he just wailed louder and louder, so comically. This is one of the best parts, because it kept the overall reminder to not take the movie so seriously. Yet, the parallels between comedy and horror are so close that this blend works greatly. Tarman was absolutely the scariest zombie in there. The grossness of him, the unbalanced movements, and yet st he still had the capabilities to think and talk. Tarman's idea to try pulling the locker Tina was in down with a chain is frightening, considering that he's supposed to be dead. The movie brings up the great concept of the zombies being able to talk. All Romero movies never had this feature, and I remember being shocked when I saw that first time ever. It wasn't even bad. It was used in a way where the zombies would trick others into becoming food for them. The best part of this was how the half-corpse woman had a conversation with Don Calfa's character, just asking why they ate brains, trying to see it from the zombie's point of view. It's a great concept that I can't recall being used anywhere else. <sighs> I do believe that the writers put themselves into a hole with how the zombies could be killed. In reality, you couldn't. Not even fireworks, because that releases the chemical into the air, which causes acid rain, which awakens the dead. Truly, I don't think there's any true way to kill the zombies, as canonically said in the horror movie, at least. While it was funny that the army just decided to bomb a whole-ass town, I don't think that this ending was supposed to create a sequel. At least, not a sequel in the way that Return 2 did. At most, I thought a sequel would have picked up where the original finished off, perhaps with any survivors trying to escape the city, as it was like four, or it was said that like four to five thousand were dead at the end of the first movie. I'm not sure what type of magic tool would kill the zombies in this situation, except perhaps starving them out. 
though this wouldn't really explain why the amputated limbs to the yellow naked zombie at the beginning kept moving around, riding themselves into a hole aside. I think this is a great movie. The Trioxin theme is great, and I really wish that it was officially released somewhere to listen to. The punk soundtrack was also really cool. I'm glad that they included relevant music to the overall punk theme, especially how the cover art is of two punk zombies, who I've always considered to be trash and suicide. In conclusion, I would say that this is five out of five zombies. Definitely recommend, as it's a cult classic, silly, but scary in its own ways. This is a movie I most definitely like to rewatch and have rewatched multiple times. <laughs>